transition to live right now. All right, I'm ready to start the timer if you want to start with the countdown whenever you are ready. Okay. Um, so right, right before I start, um, this is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, uh, Blue Rescue Team. This game has a lot of cutscenes and just a lot of time where I'm going to be mashing or holding a button. So um, I'm going to be explaining a lot when I'm not doing anything, but probably not a lot when I'm actually doing things. Just because of how this game's going, or how this game goes. So the first thing I'm going to say right before, even before I start is, I need a certain starter. If you've ever played Mystery Dungeon and you are a Pokemon, you have a starter and a partner, right? I need a certain starter to actually get through the game the fastest. And if I don't get that starter, I'm gonna have to reset and sit here for two minutes every reset. So bear with me uh, when I'm starting this run. But yeah, I'm gonna start in five, four, three, two, one, start. So what I'm looking for, what I'm looking here is for hasty questions. And um, to get hasty, I need hasty because I'm gonna get um, skitty. And I need to get hasty there, so I'm resetting. A very quirky thing about this game is that you cannot skip this opening cutscene if you do not have a save file. So we're gonna have to watch this cutscene for, I think, a minute and a half, something like that. And that's why this um, estimate is so high, just because it may take me 30 minutes to get my starter. So yeah, resident sleeper boys. Good. And the annoying thing, the annoying thing about this quiz is that sometimes you don't even have the questions to get hasty. And that's like the most annoying part about this whole game. Like I've literally gotten one haste, one question that gives me hasty points in both quizzes I've taken. So that's RNG for you. It's kind of like I'm um, resetting based on stats. Think, think the Lord, I need to reset based on stats. But I just need to get the starter partner combo. Also, this is my. F oh my goodness, I typed it in wrong. What the heck? Okay. Shout out to Halfrey. He was supposed to make this. Um, he was supposed to do this run, but then he couldn't. Something got up. But Hal Scamper and well, basically all of Hal's in are like my favorite runs of all time. So let's see. Let's see if this quiz gives us something good. Thank you. Okay, I got hasty there. It only took three tries, so that was pretty good. So now we're gonna have to pick our starter. We use Squirtle for a couple of reasons. The first reason is because he has um, a versatile move called Bubble. And we use Bubble a lot to just slow down bosses. Um, turn based game, Mystery Dungeon type that. Nice. And um, we use Bubble to slow him down. And that's basically our only reason for choosing Squirtle. He's kind of bulky, and he uses Bubble. For the longest time, you would use um, Squirtle Charmander combo and just hope we got um, Smoke Screen for Charmander. But, but um, because he learned something else with Smoke Screen at level 19, we can't really use Charmander because he only learned Smoke Screen half the time. I'm also um, naming myself and my partner one letters because uh, how this how the text scrolls you can already kind of see it goes uh, a frame per letter and having multiple frame names add up very fast. So after four or five minutes, actually like resetting and doing absolutely nothing, we're going to be into our first um, dungeon. This one's not very special. I'm just going to try to. Book it to the stairs, but first I have to change some settings. Like I'm um, setting certain moves. Hello. Changing IQ so he moves things. Now we still gonna kill it. I do not want to fight anything in here. 
I just don't. It's not beneficial to me or anything. Leveling up takes a lot, a lot of time in this game. It's just easier to just not level up. Okay, that was the best pattern I could have had. I'm so used to splitting, dude, and now I have my splits open. That's, that's it's weird, but whatever. So we have we have Caterby here. And we're gonna save him, we're gonna get some stuff, and we're gonna just like, oh okay, we need to return home. But let me get into um different categories of this game. I'm gonna be running the any percent quote unquote glitchless category. And um we're gonna use uh we're gonna quit the game and go back into the game by um, quick saving in dungeons to manipulate uh, where stairs spawn, where everything spawns. For some reason when you quick save on a dungeon, it resets your seed to zero. And what the seeds do is it just like determines how the dungeon looks basically. So by quick saving on certain floors we can reset the seed to a more desirable floor layout so we don't have to fight more things, we don't have to waste more time going places because we know exactly where to go and exactly how to move. Save states and dungeons. I think the total time is added up to like about an hour, and we're gonna be in this adventure together for like two and a half hours. So that can kind of gauge how much actual gameplay time there is. So I need I need to save here. This is the only time we're gonna be saving outside of a dungeon this game. Um, and this save is forced, which is why we have to take it. It's kind of a cool, I wouldn't say cool mechanic, but it's just like a mechanic that they put in uh, to introduce how to save like on your bed and crap. So yeah. And uh, a, a, a really cool fact about this game, if you've ever wanted to play this again, or like any PMD games, if you hold B, it'll automatically scroll the text for you. I don't need to mash, I don't need to do anything. There's only one time in this whole run I'm gonna be mashing A um, for a purpose. And that's gonna be Frosty Grotto about an hour and an hour and a half in. So we need to get to this mailbox to open some mail. But squirrel's in the way and I can't really open it from the side and there's weird like hitboxes everywhere. So I'm I call this swag strat. I don't know why. Oh my goodness, Squirtle! Oh my goodness. So I failed that. Tremendously, but you see where the hit, not hit boxes, but like borders are that like summon, not summon, but like make you go through, scroll through dialogue. I can't even talk, but scroll through dialogue like that. It's really, it's a really small window to stick the mailbox. So, the best case scenario here is on the first floor, I spawn right by the stairs. The thing with the first floors, the first floors are the only dungeons we cannot, uh, the only floors that we cannot manipulate. So they're completely random. I got a pretty good floor one. Other than that, like, we can manipulate everything to our will. And that'll be very apparent later. Where, we're, where we are wasting turns, running from enemies just to save some time. Unfortunately, there's a lot in this game that you're just going to have to take my word for it, because in order to explain it to you, it'll cause, or it'll make me like have to actually mess up and show you. But I, I pick up that apple there, because um, if you've played Mystery Dungeon before, 
There's missions we're gonna have to do. Oh, whoops. see how big the uh, gap is. Oh, on the mailbox, we have to go visit this thing again. So now we're gonna have to go, uh, go pick up some missions. Cause that's the next thing we're gonna do. Sword has been explained to us stuff we're never going to use, like the bank and the item storage. We're going to use Golden to link some moves together, just because um, linking moves are kind of overpowered in this game. But the main things we're going to be using is the board office, the shop, and the move locker. We only go to Golden once, I think. Yeah, we only go to Golden once, and we only really go to the shop if we are, are low on revive receipts. And I want many, many revive receipts. So if you see, if you saw quickly, I got a um, near mission. Near missions are very, very good. Um, it's basically just like, I need you to find this item at this place. But they really don't tell you exactly where they like are like near this floor so basically how near missions work is um you don't have to save anybody and that saves time purely because um there's text that pops up that costs time and then actually rescuing the kid takes a long time So like if you see here, I'm not getting any like notifications saying you need to save this guy and oh my goodness, this RNG. This is another reason why. Okay, uh, this game is so like RNG based, which is why like the time for it is so like the lenient time is so high. Yeah. So that was the decent missions. Purely because I didn't really have to go anywhere to turn or four three. So now I'm gonna look at this mission rewards I got a revive receipt. Very good, very good. The worst thing they can give you is absolutely nothing. Or like cherry berries and max elixirs. Uh, max elixirs are supposed to help you, but they really don't in this game because you don't really need there's no point where you're gonna need a max elixir. Because you're just flying through floors, not killing anything in sight. So if anyone's like having has any questions or whatever, feel free to ask because I really am running out of things to talk about about this game. And um, like in these cutscenes, I have no idea like how to fill in time and stuff. <clears throat> Purely because there's like something to talk about. I've already pretty much covered everything. So 
some magic, and like this like trio comes and he's like, yo, you need to save my son at the top of this mountain for whatever reason. We're like, okay, man. So this Mount Seal is particularly crappy. <laughs> Mount Seal is particularly crappy just because um how the first floor lays out. It can literally snake around for an infinite amount of time. And you can be at one side and um, they can be at another side. Like the stairs can be at the opposite side from where you are, and it's just terrible. I So that was pretty good. I only had to fight one thing, but um, that dungeon can be particularly uh, like hard or challenging just because of the way the opponent Pokemon hit. They hit for like almost all your health, and if you get hit twice, you're dead. So the second floor is really interesting. I'll talk about it later after I actually do it, but um, it's really cool manipulation. So if you just go up there, like if you just follow the path up, you won't be able to. Um, actually like go through lower game volume might be worse, I got you. That might be too low now, but I'll fix I'll think about it. <clears throat> that should be good. So if you just oh my goodness, okay. I got things going on. I'm, I'm actually winging it right now. I kind of know where things are, but I'm not sure. Whatever, man. Ooh, take down. So we're coming up on Skarmory right here. Oh my goodness, wait a second. So, our first boss fight, Skarmory, he's, a, he's actually a pushover. Like, a real legitimate pushover. Because he only has 65 health, and we have something called Gravelly Rocks right now, that deal 20. And he was a step away from us, so we just, we can throw three rocks and basically kill him. So I gotta do a little bit of menuing here. To just, um, make sure I can set Gravelly Rocks. Instead of having to actually go into my inventory every time I can set them. And the pushover is done. I'm a little over level for right now, but eh, whatever. Whatever. Gap, and then the Magnemite show that we saved earlier and saved Deacon's butt. But now we have to sit through this whole cutscene of Magnemite talking about, hey, we want to join your team, but we have nowhere to stay. That'll lead us into another, like, four minute cutscene. Friend areas are completely useless in their scrum, as you can kind of tell. Um, we get some stuff from Dodrio, actually. That's kind of important. We get a Pichu Scarf and we get a Ginsu. And those things are going to be very important a little bit later, actually. But they're very important right now, because we can sell them to get stuff. Yeah, this, like, this is... I can totally... Uh, ride people just falling asleep to this uh, marathon. So it's like very chill and laid back kind of stuff. But yeah. We just need to go see Wigglytuff tomorrow. But um, before we go to Wigglytuff, we, we have this dream cutscene basically filler for a story that we don't care about. But <laughs> that was a complete joke, by the way. This The story of this game makes the game like. And the, the dungeons are pretty cool, the mechanics are kind of decent. 
it's a mystery dungeon game with the Pokemon skin, but the, the story of the game actually is really, really solid. I can say that for basically all games except for all PMD games except for Gates. The Gates is in a PMD game. We don't talk about Gates. We need to go see Woodley Tough, but we need to go grab missions first. And I'm actually going to go look for seeds. I can buy one. And I'm actually from the walls. I'm going to see if there's frustration in here. Nope. So, um, there's a, there's a huge, huge time save that is entirely based on RNG. Yeah, surprising, right? It's, it's Pokemon. Time save based on RNG? No. But yeah, um, there's a, like, there's a very, very small chance that we can get um, a TM called Frustration. So, if anyone knows, if anyone's anyone in this play Pokemon, we know Return to Frustration are the two moves that are based on happiness in the main games. And, um, they're, and Frustration is the less than used one because it requires your happiness to be at the lowest point. But um, Frustration is very, very good in PMD. Because um, how happiness happiness is basically re replaced by something called IQ and uh, special uh, food called gummies increases your IQ, but you start off with a base IQ of zero. So that means frustration has the full power potential at the start of the game. So it's 45 base damage basically, and with frustration linked to like tackle. It actually um, can carry us through the whole entire game without having to use like double slap or a second hitting move uh, facade, which we're gonna pick up later in the run in Lapis Cave. So there's been um, major route finds and major route changes throughout even the past year in this game. Because Save and Quit isn't that old, it's like a year and a half old. But uh, we found Save and Quit through a Japanese task where the man just quick saved and then knew where to go. Like it was like a 230, which was insane from our perspective of no Save and Quit runners, because it was like a world record world, world record by 20 minutes if, if it was actually like done in the English console. But um, that transitioned us to the freaking Saving Quit Wasteland, which is now Worcester's game. But, I mean, I've reached him, I've took him world record back when we didn't have facade in our route plans. And the only person running facade was um, Chansey. Chansey Ness. But anyway. We, then we found, um, through Chansey, we found Facade strats, which are basically, we don't rely on Double Slap, we rely on Tackle plus Facade to carry us through the game. I freaked out for a second, because I usually, we have to do a certain amount of missions to trigger a cutscene, and I just, like, completely blanked on what, what uh, type of missions we have to do. Cool game. That's actually really solid. So now, um, how the seed, uh, like, handles what to spawn depends on criteria, like, the seed and whether you have missions on the floor or not. If you have a mission, you'll have an extra, like, entity or an extra, quote-unquote, objective of the floor. I just screwed that up here. But whatever. And, um, if there's, like, a mission on the floor, there's different strats we have to do. In order to not get the encounters we need, because like I need to get out of my go out of my way to get that four four encounter. 
Thankfully, the other two are in very convenient spots. The 4 3 is actually that Voltorb we had to kill before. And yeah. So that makes mission walk faster, just figuring, knowing that we actually have to find. Or we have to find no objectives now. We don't even have to find the guy along with the stairs. As in, no saving could be to find both, which sometimes was a huge hassle. I'm getting a lot of live seeds, which is very good. Very, very good. Oh my goodness. People being bros? Your count is so low because this is res this is a resident sleeper game. Resident sleeper game. Okay man. This is the perfect speedrun to watch. If you've never if you've like never played uh, these games before and you have no intention to play this game, but you wanna know what happened in the game anyway. But yeah, I've gotten a lot of viewers, like, all the PMD runners have commented on the amount of viewers they get purely just for them to sit down and watch the game being played. Because, like, how this how the screen scrolls text, it's easy to read. If, you can, if you're somewhat half competent in reading, you can read it while we scroll it, like the fastest it ever is. But yeah, if you haven't played this, I strongly suggest even um, after watching this play it, because this is any way you can play this game. Oh goodness, I don't need to go here. Actually, yeah, I don't need to go here. Whoops. I was thinking of tomorrow. Anyway, we have two. We don't quick save on. By the way, we don't quick save on Tiny Woods, purely because it's very, very redundant. It's only three floors. And it actually saves, or loses time to quick save. Where is this guy? Get here, Wumble. Uh, these games are fun, but they're very, very grating on you. Um, just like for, um, Explorers of Time Sky Darkness, for example. Don't get here. Those are six and a half hour games for a normal, for like a normal speedrunner. That's insane. Classic brain changes. Ooh. Am I gonna get too big of an inventory? You only get 20 um, held items in your bag at all times in US between my mic and Sky Time Darkness where they gradually increase. So I, I need to menu here, like, pretty dang fast. I don't think I've got any trash items, so I don't need to actually throw any items out. I just need to place some items down. And, um, grab the rocks and stack when you get them from missions. So I need to actually, like, stack those together. And then I need to... Yeah, that's about it from the uh, item menu, because I have, like, eight seeds. Seven seeds, an insane amount of either seeds. If I'm gonna need that much, I'm gonna be questioning my ability in this game. But yeah, these guys are actually jerks. People talk about Skunk Tank and Duskin were being super big jerks, but I hate Gengar with passion. Just because. He makes you go, he makes you do a couple extra boss fights, and makes you go on the whole fugitive segment, which is like an hour long, give or take. Oh my goodness. Uh, crap. Give me a second. Okay. I do not have a sleep seat on me, so that's why I didn't pick up that mission. This is my favorite menu in the whole game, by the way. So, that warp was a needling to move together. Basically, it, it just makes me attack a lot more often, which is super helpful in, like, later games, or, like, later in the run where I'm underleveled and I need to hit things multiple times to actually kill it. And that kind of starts right in here in Sinister Woods, because a lot of these, you know, people don't die in one hit. But, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I forgot, like, this game has a very, very, very good post-game 
like playability. The 90, the 99 floor dungeons are pretty like crappy. Sometimes, like um, the, the one you get Lugia in, that one, or at least like the one floor monster houses. Yep, those can go down a hole. But other than that. Okay, that's some about as good, decent as many. Rip. Soft block and toasting. Okay. So here's my first, like, time I'm going to manipulate a crit. So we can, uh, that artist wouldn't have died if I didn't have that crit, but I can guarantee that crit by moving a certain way. Also here, I don't attack the centric because Squirrel actually has better uh, ways to deal with that. Also here, this is... I don't have to actually fight that thing, which is good. So this is a cool manipulation because if we would have gone up, if we if we would have gone up, we would have run into a Pokemon we had to fight. Hello. So this is the first time, the first time I'm showing you guys um, a quick save not on floor one. And the reason behind this is if we quick save on this floor, we just have a really good floor layout after this. And it just makes the force fly by. So I'm just going to um, quick save here for a more favorable pattern. Like I, I spawn right next to the stairs here. And I don't have to fight anything on this floor. And I don't have to fight anything on this floor. Just overall good. This is some pretty precise, like the first precise manipulation in the run. But it's not that hard. There's harder ones. Come. So now, he's level 10, I'm level 9. Okay, this will work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack in a certain way that makes Gengar basically not touch us. Gengar is so... He's so annoying in a casual run because he has stuff like Spite and um, Curse that'll just kill your ability to attack anything. And um, that Curse actually helps us because it just cuts his HP in half and just makes this easier. So by reading Gengar for Gaff, last he just panics and starts facing regular attack sparing and you can just barrel right on through this fight. Just pretty, pretty good, pretty good. So that was that. Now, look at that next. We have also. Um, Okay, we have Silent Chasm next. Silent Chasm is like the first point in the run where we're gonna do a very, very specific uh, manipulation to get some things done. Like, we need to get a, there's a power band in here we're gonna get. There's a... We're gonna waste turns to get crits, etc, etc. And um, it's pretty funny too, because it, it's the first time you can whip out or you can like stand strong in the game. I guess it gives you that choice, because right before you get the Silent Chasm, Squirtle's like, oh, my stomach hurts. Like, like, he, like he does. My stomach hurts, I need to um, go. I, I need to go back, we can't do this. And you can fake it with him, but end up, in the end, like, it fails either way, but in the end, you can make yourself look like a wuss or make him look like a wuss. Pretty funny. But, um, I'm gonna actually go check the item shop. I think it's... For some reason, I think it's like slash host, and then this name. But I'm gonna check the mission work, because I still need... A, um, a 
Tiny Boy's mission. Is that Thunder Wave Cave mission was be before? So now I don't need to worry about missions ever again. Or well, picking them up, I need to still do them, but that was really good, that was really good to pick up. Silent Chasm is actually I don't know, yeah, yeah, Silent Chasm. I'm tired. Silent Chasm is actually a pretty short dungeon, but it has so much involvement in it. It's um it's very cool. But here's the um here's the sickness I'm talking about. There's always like, I know there's some points in this run where you have to choose certain things because if you don't, it will waste a lot of time. Like, the most notably, it's up in the sky. I'm, in, I'm insane. I swear I'm not insane. It's up in the sky somewhere. We need to go find it. Deal. And that's like, if you do that, that's a whole minute basically down the drain. Yes. This, as you can tell, this dungeon. For the first floor of this dungeon could be insanely brutal just because of how small the rooms are and how many like places you have to look at. And that was actually really, really good RNG. I, I like to say that the first floor takes some skill to actually be good at, but man, it could it could be argued either way. You could be lucky or you could kind of skill and know where things are. Also, I grab the rock here because if I grab the rock here, Squirrel kills it anyway. And tackling wastes like a second or something. It's negligible. Negligible. I can't even speak to it. It doesn't really matter. So this is the floor I'm talking about getting that power band. I'm gonna kind of shut up while I do this. Okay. Nice. Oh goodness. You bet. Holy crap, dude. Oh, hi. Actually, I'm gonna take this time to throw my power game. So I was supposed to put it on floor. The floor I picked it up on. But dang, I'm actually below level limit? Is that what that's called? I don't really know it. I'm below the level threshold. This is, um, crit manipulation that I was talking about. I'm also going to move in a very specific way to not have a Houndor uh, tap us when we're going through the stairs. Also, I, uh, we picked this gummy up to eat later. And this is, I really like this manipulation. I A attack, and he crits both of these attacks to kill him. It's pretty, pretty cool. And it's pretty self-explanatory from there. I kind of want to know a time check, but it wouldn't really matter. I don't want to think. So with two resets, I'm only a minute behind my PB. So that's, that's not bad. It's not bad. Nice. Like my um my shift tree split, I split upon like paid out to this cutscene. Or that the Zapdos cutscene. And now it's a 36 to 38. And with two resets, I don't know, that's like two minutes ahead? But I don't know. I had a really bad early game and a decent late game. Also, this, I call this Sissy Strat, that's what I'm about to do right here. And um, basically, Alakazam is asking you, oh, Zapdos is tough. Um, are you able to take him? And we're just gonna say, nope, we're not ready to, we're not ready to take him. Because if you say yes, they'll basically ask you the same question two more times. And it saves time just to say, nope. I don't think I'm not ready for this. This game, this game, like most PMD games, not most, all PMD games have some sort of charm to them. And, um, that's what really makes it, like, the story, the charm of this game. The gameplay is halfway decent, could be better, could be worse. 
but um, just like the charm of this game, if anyone plays it, they know what I'm talking about. Mount Thunder could also be going to be a very, very tough place to get into and out of, purely because it has electric types, and the peaks are peaks in this game, especially for speedrunners, are super, super deadly. Thanks, thanks, Amiga. Good stairs again. My rule of thumb um, for finding floors is kind of just expand outward. Like, check the rooms around you and then expand outward from there, but it's really situational. Like, I just can't, if someone asks me, how do you find stairs in this game on floor one, it's hard to say this is the foolproof reason. Because it's, it's really hard to just say it. Oh, you just do this, it's easy. This is going pretty good by far, so far. Beedrills are super annoying, because they have um, access to Fury Attack, and basically any multi-hit move in this game is insanely broken. As a reminder, if I'm moving very weirdly, uh, just assume it's just because I'm trying to manipulate something. Because it's, it's very hard to just go through everything in this game. And there's a lot of stuff we don't know about why we, why we do them. It's just they work and we do them. But I can explain to you this floor pretty well in detail. So there's some, there's some extra kill. It usually takes two turns to kill. But if, um, if we wait a turn, we can avoid Growlithe in this room. There are two Growlithe in this room on the start of the level, and if you take, if you like, take the two turns to hit them, it takes a while to um, get into it. And also, we pause very slightly after that pickup of that item to make sure we don't have to fight another Growlithe. So here's my wing time. And I'm getting really good RNG. Like holy, holy snikes! I don't even know what this time is. <laughs> I might need to retime this run. This was a really good run. So Squirtle's a big butt. Oh, quite. Yeah, what, what happens here? Oh, it's a double layer still, isn't it? It's fine. So, this is the only time uh, this and maybe growing on. This is the only time we're going to be using a track on a boss. A track is very good in PMB just because it makes the boss basically not able to do anything for a couple turns. And if we combine that with the slowing, slowing down the bubble, it's just super overpowered. Squirtle's a really big butt, and even though he's a terrible type matchup, he just YOLOs straight to it. So I'm just going to step to the side and make Squirtle, right, make Squirtle come back to me, basically. And that's because dedicated travelers I think. Best, best IQ in the game. They removed it from all the former games. Whatever. So if you see uh, Zapdos, he gets slowed. So that'll just make his infatuation uh, go on for longer. And we're just gonna spam through this battle. And it's pretty self-explanatory. So I just saved another minute. Like, I'm actually even with my splits right now, I think. Actually, no, I'm 30 seconds ahead of my splits. And I started, like, late. Unless, I don't know if, um, what's his face? The same reset when I had to, like, restart. But I'm just gonna pretend he didn't. And I'm actually, like, two, two and a half minutes ahead. Capital. But anyway, now they're gonna be like, you need to go to, um, see Zatu to find out what the heck's going on. This is actually the first time they tell someone else that um, this man is, or that you are actually a human and not a Pokemon. And Alakazam starts to get skeptical. A little bit skeptical. And they're like, 
go in the pockets I have to, to um, figure out. And um, with Grand Canyon, or Great Canyon, comes the one of my favorite soundtracks in the game, and the most ridiculous manipulation in this run. Like, hold on to your seats, this is gonna be a wild ride. This is also the first time we're gonna actually like choose not the first option due to um, like it's saving time. Great Canyon, we go! I'm gonna have to really focus when the time comes for the really insane manipulation, just because um, they're really hard. And if I fail them, it's basically not run over, but it's basically run over. But I'm, like, I'm gonna lose a seat here, I think. Let's do this. That should kill. This isn't going as smoothly as I hoped. Oh, rip seed. Whatever, I have some despair. As you can see, stab plus various other things is helping us a lot with uh, damage output, which is nice. Hmm. Am I out of good health? I think I am. Plus there's a skip room right behind me, I can't, like, waste time. So I'm just gonna ignore this fan feed, because he can go, like, screw, so... We don't need anything from him. Okay, this is also a very, very precise movement to get a link box that we're going to need later. A lot of people are, like, talking about how this isn't worth it, but it's, it's pretty cool, and I, like, literally memorized this pattern. It's kind of hard to go back. This is also something that we've done to improve the route. Usually you get you know, like if you take a regular route for that, you get a nocturne to be infatuated and you just like book it to the stairs for that. It costs a lot of time so we just don't do it. We just found out a way to manipulate it the other way. So this is when I'm gonna stop talking and start focusing. We would usually put we used to put save on this floor, but we found out strats that lets us not have to do it. I wish me luck guys. Yeah, now time for the Reich of Two. Yes, I got all of that. Dude, those are actually, like, that floor 11 is actually so good. Like, when Worcester originally found it, we were, uh, we were in awe just because of the complexity of this was so insane that we didn't know what to do. Like, we didn't know how to react to it. But yeah, we didn't have to fight anything on both of those floors. <laughs> also, we attack him to save time. If you tickle him, <laughs> it's pretty funny. He just got the sniffles, and it takes him a while to just actually get going. But if we actually attack him, and it saves like 10 seconds or something, it's pretty hilarious. But yeah, as of now, I'm 30 seconds ahead of my PB still with two resets. <laughs> this is hype dude.
Excuse me, I had to go burp up a few things. Pardon me. Anyway, there's a, we literally have about 10, 10 to 15, no, 10 to 15, 10 to 12 minutes of cutscene before I get into another dungeon. Basically what happens is like, oh, I've heard things happening in the square. This is another uh, time where we're not answering the first question to save time. This is the, um, this is the famous, it's in the sky. We need to go to it. Oh goodness, I need to move. I was pointing up. Basically, now we have a lombre that tells us to go places. We go places, we find out stuff, we go back. And Gar Gengar becomes a butt, and even with his bad reputation, somehow manages the whole town to turn against us. And we're like, Dan and G. Now we have to run. Forever. And when I was first starting to run this game, like, no save and quit style, I would always die in, and I still, most of the time, I have no save and quit runs. If I die somewhere, I die in the fugitive segment. It's so hard to bounce back from dying in the fugitive segment. It's possible, but it's, it's slow and it's super hard. Like, it's, if you take precautions, it's very easy not to, um, cost a single seed in fugitive with Skitty Squirt Apartment. But, um, it's very, very slow. It's like, attract everything, make sure if you, um, do have to fight multiple things, you make certain to attract both things so you don't die. On boss fights, pray to RNG so that they don't powder snow, turn one. So now we're just gonna go back and scroll, just like, hey man, I don't really want to do anything today. Is that cool? Cool? Cool with you? And I'm like, yeah, that's cool with me. And then you get like him like saying, "I'm not doubting you, man. I got your back, man. I got your back." And this is when coming up soon, Bible thumps are gonna have to start flying. Cause I remember, I cried, I cried twice from playing PMD as a kid. The first one was of this game it was when we were leaving for Fugitive, and the second time was at the very end of PMD Sky. Yep. So I, I honestly think. The sadder, like, the, how this game finishes the end game sequence of Oh, I Believe Now, it, it's pretty Bible Thump, it's pretty, like, moving. But I think Sky Time Darkness is better. So, anyway, we're gonna go to the town now and find gamers and bullshit happening. So this next dungeon, I'm just going to do a little preview, in this next dungeon, we have Lapis Cave, and in Lapis Cave we're going to need to pick up a TM called Facade. And with Facade comes a lot of things that we can link it right away because we have that link box whenever we picked it up last dungeon, but um... It'll basically provide a second tackle. If, if we could tackle twice in one turn, we would do that from the start, basically. But we can't, unless we get frustration. So we were, ba we're basically just like, yo, know, we need a second attack even to speed up this game. So we're like, okay, facade's a cool. The facade's a cool team that we, is all along the way we can pick up. Uh, why don't we just use facade? And I'm like, and we're like, yeah, it sounds a cool idea. It's in like in the route, kind of. We can fit it in there. 
funny enough, in my um, 215, my PD of this game right now, I used, I didn't use facade strats, I used double slap. And the funny thing was, I had a facade team in my inventory the whole time. I picked it up like in the first floor of Mount Blaze or something like that, and I just had it in my inventory, and I had no idea if I was going to use it or not. I don't know why I picked it up in the first place and didn't use it. But yeah, everyone's like, let's kill these guys, that definitely solves this problem. And now we have to we have to ask Squirtle, do you want to give up this team and just you save your save your butt and I'll just run? And Squirtle's like, no, nah, man, I got your back, man, I got your back, man. And we're like, cool, man. And then these guys show up and we kind of have a fight, but you know, you know, this is not really a fight. This is more like a they slash us a couple times. Are we really fighting? No, not really. They're just like, yo, you need to go find what's up. We, we kind of, we, we're just playing along, man. We kind of believe in you guys. So just go find out the truth. Because this, this ain't it. And Alakazam knew. I, I, I have a feeling Alakazam knew who it was, but just let it happen. Which is a shame. But whatever. And then Counterpiece shows up and he's like, Yo, man, I got your back too, man. I, I, I can't do anything, but I got your back. The, the people you meet in this game are insane bros, all of them. Except for the main use. The main use are kind of butts. So is Gengar, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already talked about how my hatred of Gengar is. Soundtrack. It's gonna be as really good music, dude. I'm just gonna shut up so you can listen to it. pretty hyped. I'm a minute ahead of my PV, and um, I kind of had to reset twice. So I don't, I don't even know how long like, I'm ahead of. But yeah, Lapis King, one of the longest dungeons I have, with the pipe to go through. It's like third or fourth longest. There's nothing too scary in here, except for the Ninkata. Ninkatas can be butts. Ooh, ooh. Please do not. Fury swipes my face. This is not going that well, but whatever. Whatever. So we'll get facade on floor 11 or 12 of this dungeon. And then we'll immediately link it, like, no questions asked, kind of link it. A lot of these movements in Lapis Cave aren't very precise. The only ones that are kind of precise are the, um, the four we have to get a saw on, it's kind of precise. We actually just teach it from the ground. 
we don't even bother picking it up. I guess that's pretty precise. We have to go out of our way to just make sure that he doesn't attack us once. Sonic really helps us too on the first floors. Because, um, they just, it makes us one hit so many more things than just go to tail and tackle. And PMD Sky is six hours, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know. So, um, I kind of killed PMD Sky, not gonna lie. I got a 603. I don't think anyone will be anywhere close to reaching that anytime soon. I just got six hours of pure RNG luck. I say PMD as a whole in the speedrunning sense. If you're running no saving quit, it's like 80% luck, 20% skill. And saving quit is about half and half because you still have four ones to deal with. And mission rewards. If we could manipulate, manipulate missions on there, that'd be like, that'd be so hype. Fun fact, this and Upper Forest 8 per nine, one of those are the exact same way up. Like, exactly the same way up. Except the ones like skin. Magni, one skin. Watery. This was the first time where we witnessed some um, facade being helpful. They'll kill the slug when one hit. Don't blink. I just realized I'm not like saving on the peaks. I usually try to save on peaks in marathon settings just because they can be real like run killers, like right here. Hello? I just missed both those attacks. What's happening, dude? I'm getting trolled by Mario Machine. I think this kills. Yeah, it does. Also, another route. Thing. Oh, that's me. Yeah, I don't learn sing because sing is useless. Of course, you have to be right there. I heard like um something about you can download something for the 3DX. The new 3DS XL or something like that. That's basically a cap card for free. <laughs> SPMD is like, what you do is you have to add three hours to every game. Oh, hi. 
So, like, Gates is nine hours or something insane like that. What am I doing? And then, this game is three hours, Sky and Time are like six hours, Gates is like nine ish. And then, I, I would think SPMD would be somewhere around 12 to maybe even 16 hours, and that's kind of insane for a speedrun. And I only say that because the difference in between this game and SPMD is drastically different based on, like, just the time it takes story-wise, and the time it takes, um, for just completing the dang game, to remember? Gates doesn't exist. Gates does not exist. Also, I'm doing this very precise, very, very precise, movement, just to make sure I don't drop seeds. Like, we can make like bosses to an extent, just based on like how we move and how they move. And this is the first time I'm actually manipulating the boss fight, I just realized. So yeah, this is boss manipulation. The Raider, I don't think Raider 3DS has that capability, I think it's only like the 3DS. I don't know if that would kill me. Because I'm under level. Also, we don't learn Water Gun, because Water Gun is a slow move. Seeds and the two Reviver Seeds in Frosty Forest, or more, more specifically the peak of Frosty Forest and Grotto, that we can pick up. We're not going to pick up one just because there's manipulation we can do to make us not have to fight anything. They're two nasty, nasty machines that are just so bulky in the peak that um, we can uh, completely avoid through some pretty. Pretty insane strats, if I say, if I say so myself. Mm, I'm, I have like pick up bird things. Yeah. Uh, so what about what about the halfway point, give or take, give or take? Frosty Grotto isn't particularly, or the Frosty Forest isn't particularly, particularly memorable. The only thing it has going for it is um, it's the only time I'm going to be mashing A this whole entire game. Because for some reason when Articuno speaks, you know, like on floor 5 or 6, it doesn't, you can't hold B for that. So I'm just going to mash A until the cows come home. Hear my neck cracks through my mic, cap with me. Okay. Let's go, Squirtle. I'm ready, let's go to Frosty Forest. I'm hyped, you're hyped, he's hyped, she's hyped, everyone's hyped. <laughs> Attract, cap with me. I'll just do a check out and go high for it. I forgot. kind of run from the street. Hello? I just went into another sudden dude. I'm throwing this run, guys. Rip me. 
hey, at least I'm quick saving. <laughs> Sometimes I just completely derp out and forget to quick save. That's like the worst feeling in the whole entire world. Oh goodness, I movement wrong, I very smart. That's okay. He's ready for button mashing. Button mash hide! This Mighty Anna used to be a huge pinging, because it used to be a three-turn kill. But now it's not. Because the facade is pretty great. Okay, I'm very scared for this peak. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save my adventure. This peak and map the pit of Magma Cavern is by far the two most, like, hard uh, dungeons in this game to speed run through. Because look at this. I only died because I got a good facade and capital rolls. So this isn't, because this isn't going to die. Actually, it might. And look at this layout, like, how do you expect me to do this fast? It's just so, like, weird. I'm choking pretty hard. Okay, let's do this. I'm like in a very safe, comfortable position. And. God dang you. Oh, this is still okay, I guess. I'm having really bad peak floors, which is like the majority of which time saving this run comes from. So that, that was a pretty hard manipulation, if I say so myself. I'm actually going to be where it's just going to. Okay, here's the peak. It saves about two seconds to waste a seat here and just like hold your ground and tackle spam. But I'm just gonna track because that's easier and I can I can bank on revival seats later in the game when I screw up and inevitably screw up. So we actually don't attract right here. Because if we would have, he would have broken out, and on the last turn we used powder and snow, which is a move we don't really want to see. So instead, he just regular attacks, which is nice. I might be low on PP for Squirtle. I hope not. I'm almost out of PP, that's an interesting. I think I have a max looks it.
I'm good, I think. Dang, that took a long time. Whatever, man. Now we get to meet the most useless partner in PMD game history. Absol. He's almost as bad as Beedoof. Not, not, not that worse than Beedoof, but he's almost as bad as Beedoof. But we're just gonna just make him not do anything, and it'll be good. So yeah. I'm not going to be a map song letter because it doesn't really matter. Okay, so there's nothing pretty, there's nothing special about Nether Freeze, in all honesty. It's just like, oh, move in a certain way, just go to the, go to the stairs, it's Gucci. On that, on that floor four, wherever, where the last couple of floor, the floor we just on, uh, there used to be a seal that would show up randomly, but we've found out a strat that wouldn't produce a seal. It was very weird. We were very confused for a while. But we ended up fixing it. As you see, there's like there's a ton of floors where we just kind of just go straight to the you know, stairs without any kind of hassle, really. Don't really have to fight anything, don't really have to do anything. The only ones here 
We have to like fight this spider for the weird way. That's that's what Kate does. Forgot about the China code that sometimes shows. I moved on, that was my bad. Ooh, I think I can do this one. No, I can't. Whoops. My freestyle game is a bit rusty, not gonna lie. Yeah, there's all those rest courses roll with garbage. Okay, we have cutscenes for a good five minutes now. There wasn't really anything special about, um... Of this place, either. It was just like, oh, hey, use the stairs. Use the stairs, just go to the stairs. So, after we come back, we have to do three missions, and then we have to go to the upper of forest to settle down some enemies. So, before saving quit, you and me used to have this thing called double chestnut. It was basically getting two chestnuts on floor nine of upper forest. How this game works with stuff is you need three chestnuts to build your base. And um, the only way to do that was to acquire uh, three chestnuts through going through the game, or going through a four force twice. Uh, you get one from the mission reward that lineup gives you, and then you need to get two extras. And we would call getting the two extras in the first run of Upward Force a double chestnut. And it would save a good three to five minutes. Because that, it just um, made you not go to Upper Forest one more time. But the thing is, getting double chestnut is completely RNG. Surprising, right? Time lost due to RNG. But anyway. Um, if you didn't get double chestnut, it was basically three uh, minutes down the drain, and you couldn't really... If you, if you're running against splits with double chest, so it's kind of just infuriating looking at your splits and realizing you're losing five minutes just because um, the game didn't want you to uh, have double chestnut. And M. Bison's time, his 249 emulator, actually does not have double chestnut, so 
We could possibly look at sub 245 with a double check so. But that category is so RNG, you don't want to really run it anymore. So yeah, that's that's a double chest for you. But first, we have to rat out Gengar. It's actually pretty good that we actually rat out the uh, antagonist this time. Or the main antagonist. I don't even know if the, like, the main quote-unquote antagonist of this game is. It's really just like Gengar, and then like there's very, very small antagonists everywhere. Like grab it on and run the plaza and basically the bosses. But yeah, we have one missions to go and then maybe and then we have to go do four missions. And the only way to go to anyway to I think we anyway the only way to do four missions quickly is three round steel. And you remember when we picked up those three round steel missions? Our fourth is in our mailbox right now as we speak. And we'll just grab that out of it and then use it for our four. It's pretty nice actually, because you can get four from the mission board, but the four or five uh, mission, if it's not a year mission, is actually like the worst mission ever created. Cause you have to go out of your way in the saving clip and it's just it's just terrible dude. But we're we're not worried about four missions right now, we need to go do three missions. Pretty good. I've had pretty good Thunder Wave Cave Walk in general this run. That's pretty comforting. This is a new mission. I was really confused for a second. Like, what? Well, huh? I don't even know man anymore. I was supposed to just get some for like today, but whatever. Unconventional, but it's, it's a whatever kind of thing. Oof. Hopefully I don't get any seeds, because I really don't have the inventory to hold seeds right now. You grab your rock. The last thing I want to see right now, come on. Okay. Good garbage. You're giving me garbage, that's okay. Garbage. I need to go and um, toss some things out, I think. Now it's on to the Mankey uh, timeline. I already talked about how Upper Forest is really bad. Because RNG dic dictates literally everything. Uh, in no save and quit. But in Saint Quid it's not that bad, we can actually manipulate double chestnut and manipulate the Mankeys that pick up the chestnuts to come right to us. So that's kind of hype, I guess. This is a really redundant question, but how are we doing on time? So I know I'm actually doing pretty good on my pace. And I still think I'm behind the PB still. After the two resets, uh, or the two resets in the game, I'm not mad at all at this time. I still think it's a PB pace, actually.
Oh yeah, crap. I forgot I'm supposed to go to the Nutsu mission right here. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I can get it, get it whenever. I get it right before. Thank you, I guess. I mean, if I get near 4 or 5 that I have, it could be beneficial to storm. Might be beneficial just to keep this together and see if I have a near 4 or 5. Because I will only accept a 4 or 5 mission if I have a near mission. Maybe. But no. So I'll just select that, I'll inventory manage kind of, and then I'll get on my way. Now. And how many seeds do I have? Do I have like four or five? Also, this place is notorious for having really dumb. Really dumb weather. Like sandstorm. Sand, this is the only time you can get sandstorm in this game. It's actually the worst thing you can do. Because sandstorm and hail are both two very slow weather mechanics in PMD. We have to deal with hail a little bit later in the run in um, Sky Tower, but thankfully we don't have to deal with any sandstorm around for the forest. That's all we need, to be honest with you. There's times where it would help, like right here, but man, I actually don't, I actually don't, uh, I'm not supposed to fight that, uh, that I'm at, so that was a misplay, or not a misplay, but a, a mistake. This is the Air Force I was talking about. That was actually the same exact layout as that one button. Basically. And then here's this. I let Squirrel kill it, and this will be very important for later. And there's a two chestnuts, boys. So double chestnut height. And this is actually the most. This is the. Like, this, this fight's a joke. There's no other way to put it. Chestnuts you desire. And we do. 
And in exchange, they build our magnificent base that we're probably, that we're never going to see again in about 30 minutes. should start playing because that's exactly what kind of happens but you know nope we're just like oh hey they don't want to work anymore whatever man i'll just we'll feed you more chestnuts so that make you work and i'm like sure man and it ends up working out Funny enough, in Fun Runs, in the, last, in the last marathon I did this in, Fun Runs Marathon, I actually uh, sequenced, like, did sequencing wrong, and didn't complete my house thing first, but we've learned the good uh, trigger Groudon, we need two things to happen, we need four missions to happen, two missions to happen, and four to two, and then we also need our base to be built somewhere in that time frame. So it's, we can like basically just do four missions, do the uh, chestnuts, do two missions, and then it'll be fine. But yep, this is um, a base being built. We built our base now. Looks about the same, not gonna lie. I don't even remember what the old one used to look like. Very, very, I don't know. It's kind of pointless, but it's kind of cool at the same time. It's kind of like the Smeargle flag thing, where you get that one mission, you can go and get Smeargle, and change the flags, and get Skyloom planes, which is basically required to like 100% things. That's, the, that's my one pet peeve about this game. Um, you need Sky Blue Planes to unlock like a good section of the post game. And if you don't have it, then sucks to be you. Like honestly, sucks to be you. Okay, I'm gonna now steal missions. I'm ready to go do my. Okay, so um. About 100%. We had an idea called All Icons, which was basically the 100% version of this game. And the basis around it was, um, you know the icons you get in your start screen? Yeah. Get every single one of those icons. And then we were like, yo. That's kind of hard. Especially like, no save and quit of that game is pretty difficult anyway to get to that point. Save and quit. I tried to do some save and quit shenanigans. I've gotten, I got like a good bit of the game, but not a ton of the game. And I kind of just gave up after that. And we, we made it a lost cause. If I'm really bored one day, or something like that. Hey, you come here. I'm like, I don't know what to do project-wise. I might go back to it, but I don't know, man. Sounds like a really redundant thing to do. I wasted a lot of time here, by the way. I messed up the... Well, Baldwin, but I messed up the... 
something I don't know what I messed up. The movement, that's what it's called. But yeah, nothing really to show here. So you're supposed to click save, but we don't click save. Here, because we need to get this guy right here. And this is like the, I don't know why this works, how this works, but it just works. So we, we go to where he was and we hold him until that Aaron shows up. And we just go to the stairs and then it's huge. I don't know how it works, I don't really care how it works to be honest with you. Just how it works. Also this is very finicky. I literally have to pause for a frame so that um, we don't have to fight like three or four things. If you remember the first time we went through here, we had to fight like three or four things. And that sleeping pincer last time really a Voltorb in disguise. And that's on four missions. comes the easiest two missions in the whole game. After a big cutscene where Long Grace is like, you can go, you're not strong enough. And then we show him. We show him real good. Dang Long break. Uh, it's the worst to suffer through this when you can't find your second two missions and it just dawns on you that you have to go back to a really hard dungeon and go really far into it to get your two missions done in one day. But thankfully we still have two missions uh, in Tiny Woods ready to go for us. It's just like, nope, you have to go do two more missions, because you're a scrub boy. And these cutscenes near the end of the game are really stinking long for whatever reason. I don't really get it either. They're just naturally long. Back to two missions. And that's such a nice animation. Good job, Squirtle. You're doing good in the world.
Okay, done with missions forever in this game. All we have left is Rowadon and Rayquaza and their respective dungeons. We're on the final stretch. And speaking of final stretch, we're on the final stretch of this marathon too. There's only one game left after this. But man, this was this was this was a great marathon. Shout out to every shout out to everyone who had a part in this. Especially the organizers. They rock. Okay, now it's our time to go show them who's boss. This is the most technical dungeon in the run. It has so many updates to it, but I can't even count. And, um, see, this last, uh, Mecha Cavern will be very crazy to look at and just, like, see, but it's very worth it, to be honest with you. By this point, the game assumes you're pretty much at, like, low, low 20s, give or take, in level. So, I mean, they're throwing you the fully evolved Pokemon, the phone, and everything they got at you, and you're just a poor little skinny and squirrel combo who doesn't have double slap and is level 15. It's pretty, um, pretty sad, to be honest with you. But, um, I'm actually kind of over level, I'd say, for this dungeon. Like, in my, in the notes that I look at, the notes I created, that I looked at, like, I take an account for being level 13 here, and I'm level, I'm level 15. So, it's just like, I'm more prepared for this as I need to be, kind of, in a way. So I'm not going to talk just a, a ton during this, just because it's so technical. And even in my PB, I don't have this perfected in my PB. So there's like time to save here. Not how I wanted to start this off though, to be honest with you. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to get everyone in the action. Everyone get in here, am I right or am I right? Good 
There you go. Yeah, it was decent. It was decent. The first room was very, very terrible, but I'd rather have a terrible first room and terrible hallways. Because at least you can do one turn kills and rooms pretty quickly. So our regular attack here, because um he just flees. And that's pretty cool. Like pretty cool. I'm quick saving here because of better floor layouts, etc., etc. It's pretty much like you get you get the picture, man. But um, this, yeah, that was actually very, very. You need to be very, very precise on that, where it would have gone south very quickly. Now this is the first like really really technical actually wait no give you a second. This is the very this is the first very technical uh, section of this uh, place. So look at the, look at these extravagances and misses. And this is all just uh, to make sure I don't run into anything on my way over here. And that poison sickness is pretty scary. Uh, scary. Poison stick? Poison sting is pretty scary. And then this is just a little bit of tweaking. Just to make sure I don't have to fight that Arbok. There's an Arbok that shows up at pretty nasty. Oh goodness, I almost forgot how to do this. <laughs> Whoops. Oh goodness, that mall I also was That's okay, that's okay. I guess so, so that's okay. We in this. Okay. It's been a while, man. It's been a while since I've done that strat. Goodness gracious. But it's all Gucci, it's all Gucci, it's all Gucci. Remind me of King Mess later by saying Gucci. So this is usually where I eat the apple. Going good so far. It's been going good. It's been going, it's been going good. So I had to quickly pause just to make sure nothing got, got in my way. Like tip, tipple Tuesday. Okay, that was kind of stressful, I'm not going to lie. Oh, goodness me. Oh, I always mess up this floor, dude. It's okay, it's okay. Ooh, that's not good. Whoops. Oh. Oh, but I'm poisoned, so strats. We can, we can call that strats, right? We Definitely. I'm not, I have a method to my madness, believe me. Believe in me. I have method in all my madness. Now here's the most, I need to save here because this is the single most hardest floor in this game. Because there's only two Pokemon, 
Onyx and Steelix both have super high attack, both have not very effective uh, typing. And they can give you garbage like this. And if you get into a position like this, this you lose a crap ton of time. What are you doing? Squirrel, what are you doing? Thank you. This is the only time I see where double slap saves a crap ton of time. But like, this shouldn't be a thing. Like, that was pretty bad. Oh, hi. I'm gonna go the opposite direction, because I honestly believe there's nothing of value over there. Hello, Steelers. I was right, by the way, the stairs are right down there. Left to do. This done this uh route on fight better go well. I mean I could demon the moves if I had to. But I think it's fine. How many times how many hits does it take Gravit on to go down? That might be a good thing to do. Oh, I don't even say it. I want to check the shop for revive receipt, but I also want to just get on to it because I have I might be on PB pace. So add a moment, add a moment. Stretch guys, 25 plus 9 more floors. 
in their way, man. It's kind of sad to look back on this room and see how good it was for its time. But I, I still believe in the sort of boys. I can do it. It's also really refreshing. I haven't played this game in a good while. It's been a while, to be honest with you. But as it seems right now, it seems like it's going pretty good. So I got that to you know, account for it. And then Gengar has to take his little last pitiable revenge by putting me into a nightmare. What a guy. This is also a really good OST. Okay. 
be this way. Uh, Shuffets are like actually the worst things you could find in here. My lack of reviver seeds are really hitting me hard. Or my lack of max roaches are really hitting me hard. Well, that was a pretty crappy first floor. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm feeling that Shuppet incident was because of um, his moves not being on. Actually, yeah. It still worked out in the end. It still worked out in the end. Oh, goodness gracious. Don't do anything dumb, Dusko. Okay, that's fine. This is why Hail's a dumb mechanic. It takes so long to activate. where I need to be. And I messed it up anyway, but eh, whatever. That's... Optional uh, use a blast seed that saves a little bit of time. Also, here I'm just manipulating the tail so I don't have to fight things. Typical Tuesday, am I right? Am I right? But anyway. Ok, 
Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to go, boys. The, this, the peak, just this peak in general has changed a lot too in the sense of a couple of years. Or not a couple of years, but like a couple of route changes. Like we used to just quick save on 41, now I quick save like on 42 and 3 and 7. That was very bad. He got slurred though. Power through, boys. To be honest, like after running. What, Mario Golf to the Sword Tour? That's an hour long run. And after that, like anything past that seems like a super big stretch. For me to like muscle my way through. Like even this game was pretty dang hard to get myself through. I started out with, with like three hour runs. And it's not worth it to go track. Whoops. Rock Tom is that Rock Tomb is a very deadly move because it always lowers your speed. Kind of interested how many seeds I have left, but anyway. Th this uh, manipulation. They do so, uh, so much damage just because I'm level like 17. Mm -hmm. I'm even less of level, or less like level in actual runs. This is my favorite manipulation, by the way. See it, Claydol? Favorite manipulation. You get to watch it twice, so it's a win-win. I have five more di five more levels left. Okay, now Deja vu? Question mark. That was the same exact layout as three, I think. to explain about the Mystery Dungeon speedrun. Skitty, we use Skitty Squirtle just because Skitty's kind of overpowered and we get Stab normal type. And we have Facade at this point, so we have Stab on that too. I'm quick saving so much because I can manipulate floors from quick saves. And that's about it. If you know PMD, and the mechanics of PMD, also here's the teleport again, I love that so much. A seed? I don't even know if I have a seed, dude. I, could, I don't want to risk not having a seed. Whatever. It's four seconds. What the heck, man? So this is the last boss fight of the game. We literally just use bubble. Hello. We use bubble and attract combo from the Q-Shot to just tear through the plaza. Literally, the, like, the hardest fight in this game I think is Gravity Just because it's so unpredictable and what the heck's happening. There you go. And that's the game, but time's not yet. We have time in a good four and a half, five minutes. So I can kind of I can kind of oddball what my time is going to be. But yeah, we have some cutscenes and we have some Bible fun cutscenes and it's that's the run in a nutshell. So let's look and let's look at this time. This time we got. It will be about a 2.18-ish 
which isn't bad. The sub 220 is pretty damn good. Especially since I got screwed over by the late game so much. Now I'm Yep, we, because of quick save, we are very, very, very low level. Um, and that's just kind of shit I just the rest of the game. In a way. But yeah, that's PMV Blue. We kind of had just cutscenes to go along with it. We have the Bible thumb cutscenes and whatnot. But actually, actually, 218 plus the various, um, whatever the heck they're called, the various resets I had, that might be a PB. I might, I have, I'm gonna have to check on that one. But I'm gonna have to, like, look at local recordings and stuff, and that just won't be good. White screen. And we come back. I don't know how we ended up here, by the way. I don't know, like, what the deal for this is. So yeah, um, I occasionally run PMD, I really am not that active in PMD per se anymore just because my main game I like to run with Sky, and I got an insane time in Sky, which is like 20-ish um, minutes faster, not 20, 15 minutes faster than second place. And then like, I don't know, the PMD you'd probably see in my channel in the near future would be probably Special Missions. Or this game, save and quit. If I decided to torture myself again, but what I'm really, what I'm really doing right now is like Mario Golf Toad Stool Tour. If, if I stream, and then I have like non speed variety garbage that I like to stream. But yeah, um, shoutouts to a couple people. Worcester, especially for creating like 90% of this save and quit route. Um, Calgary for finding this save and quit route and being a um, being just a um, figure in the community that has been a huge impact in most ways. Cobral's another one of those people. Cobral one. Uh, another one of those people that just huge impact in the community. Especially in the obscure games like the game that doesn't exist and in um, Sky Time Darkness. For a while it was just the, the series runs for Sky Time Darkness was me. Calgary and Cobra, and then um, Charles Canis as well. Basically, most of the PMD community we're very, very, very small. We, we know each other pretty well, and um, the reason why we're so small is because we have to use emulators. There's no way around not using emulators, and that music is really loud. But anyway, because like apparently emulators don't have a good like way of timing things in a sense of uh, in-game time, because there's different loadings, scenes, and I don't even know, like, different loading times, that's the word I'm tired, dude. But anyway, yeah, that, that's about it. Time's gonna come up kind of soon-ish, like in a minute-ish. Time is coming up in about 15-ish seconds. Oh, cue you.
time is right now. Oh, I stopped uh, a couple seconds early, but 2.20.04 is the Not is. bad, not bad. Yeah. What's your PB for this game? My PB category? for this game is a um, 2.15 something. And that's with an outdated route. And no resets, I imagine. Yeah. Heck yeah. Pretty, pretty solid. I, I have... It wasn't perfect, but you know, it was pretty good for a day. For a game I haven't picked up, or I haven't done ran in a pretty long time. Yeah, good job yeah. on that. And <laughs> thank you for filling in for uh, Halfrey as well. It's awesome. Man. Yeah. So everyone leave this guy a follow for, for having to stick around with us and do a run with us. Pulling the solid. But yeah, man, good run. Good run. Thanks, man. All right, coming up next, we got a uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution with Skellicat. So stay tuned for a while, and. We'll see.